Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to go over building a boathouse in Grounded, uh, preparing for the uh, pond update. So as you can see, here's the tree. I'm right here on the southern, like, the southern edge of the pond where it pushes up to the north a little bit. They got a lot of different pieces that stick out. I chose this spot because there's a rock that sticks out right here, which I will pause the video in just a second and I will delete this and rebuild it on a, for the video. So give me just one moment while I pause it, and I'll be right back. All right, now that I've finally got the house torn down, I'm, I left this area here, you know, just as a kind of, you know, area of flatten it out on the way in, less, less having to worry about, like, issues getting stuck in the rocks. You don't have to do this if you want to. It's up to you. But this little piece of rock is what made me want to build right here. It gave you a nice, good area to build on top of. So using pebble foundations... Just start building. Now, as you can see, I can't go any further out that way, but that's fine because that is a way down, and then you can go this side, this way. You can even instead, of, you can even have that go there, take that off if you want to go a little bit wider. Yeah, you, know, you can do like this and fall off. Then you have a nice wide path headed out to the, to the pond where you're going to build your little house. And I would push these out as far as it will let you. In the live game, it may not let you push it this far. You might be able to finagle it. Oh. Like so. And there you go. Now, I don't think I can go any further, so that is the end of the uh, the pier coming out. So, just build a little ramps because you don't have to worry about running and jumping. And then... Oops, that doesn't need to be down there. Now the problem with doing the little, the half section like this is that these do not line up correctly. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm actually gonna try and shift this piece over. Don't worry about deleting stuff. Uh, well, this is creative mode, so I wouldn't worry about it anyway. But it's not gonna not gonna fall. You got good support with that rock underneath there, and you can still come underneath there with it like so. And you still can do that. I would recommend handrails. I would personally, I would not use uh, the acorn shell rails, just because for me acorn shells are very very rare because I have so many bases built right now. And this actually looks more like the uh, the little entry pier that I have uh, in my live game. That if you would like to see uh, how I have the the base set up in the live game with the way I have it anchored and everything, uh, feel free to stop by my Twitch channel. My link's in the description below. I also add lights just for some show. And then from here, we start with the actual base. Now, this is going to be the center of the base. That's just an extra part to it so we're gonna need a lot of grass floors and I like to have my grass floors not just anchored here like that'll be the actual start of the base I will actually bring the grass floors over and actually overflow it a little bit onto the um, the foundations so now we're gonna go out one two three four a minimum of five that I like to do and then going wide you have one oops not down there all right back to building I 
go three to each side of the center. So that's three, that's the center. Let's go three this way. So basically making it seven wide. Now, the front wall will actually be lined up on the scene that you see I'm creating right now. Because behind me will be more handrails. And in my base in the game, I have my dew collectors right here on the front porches, one on each side of the entry. And then I'll put some on this side too. Like so. Now, back to building floors. Now, because I like to call this my boathouse, I will actually leave these two sections open all the way out. And then I have additional storage sticking off the side of the building over here, which I will uh, show when I, when I set it all up. And the same thing here, we will continue uh, building this out. But the same thing, leaving these two sections open, so we're going to have the interior floor and then this is where these stairs going up to the second floor will be over here on this the left side you can put yours on the right left it doesn't really matter it's up to you now I used the sturdy wall because most of my buildings use we, uh, the weed stem wall but here most of the building is green and the part I'm going to do next won't really work won't really look right should I say if you if you use weed stem walls So we're just kind of throwing in the walls right now. And with the weed stem walls, you can make, you know, different patterns with the, the slanted weed stem there. You can make, you know, it go up and down in V's or mountains or however you want to make it look. It's up to you. All, all uh, personalization there. Now, this will have a wall. And then I'm going to come across, leave two giant openings. Because where I'm from, uh, boat houses are built similar to this. Oops, not up there. So, doesn't always want to build in the right spot. But like I said, you don't have to use window the, the sturdy walls. You can use <coughs> weed stem walls. You can use whatever you want. It's you know It's your building. So, that's just a quick overview. That's the front of the building. Yes, this doesn't line up square on, but if you don't want to do the double wide, just have the single one coming up, that's fine. You can do that. Now, over here is where I have all my pallet storage, which is a little part of the wall that sticks out. So, I'm going to use a corner wall, a corner ceiling uh, piece here, the new rounded corner, or squared corner, I think it's called the squared roof corner. I'm going to go ahead and put in the other wall that's supposed to be up here. And then for that that gap right there, we will do just two little slanted roof pieces. It'll all tie into the floor above it. And then when you do build it, you're going to have little holes right here. Well, that piece doesn't work, but if you use the inverted one, you can close that in. And that is where I have all of my pallet storage. I have a bunch of weed stems on the bottom. I'm not going to worry too, too much about their, their placement. They're just here more for show. Just to kind of show what I have here. I could probably squeeze them in together and get one more in there. I'm not too worried about it right now. This is creative after all. And then directly above it, Put in one grass floor all the way across. And then on top of that, you can put three, if, you're, if you have them space right, grass pallets. Now, for this base, grass pallet, grass is actually one of the harder things to go get because it's further away. 
Whereas if I'm moving just the right spot, you can see the weed stems that are right there. Those weed stems regrow every three days. So weed stems for this base are pretty easy. Now, to finish off this out this outer wall by the pond, we're gonna go back to the inverted triangle. <coughs> I'm surprised that even let me build that right there. And then, same thing. Close this up. Now, for this one, there will be walls on the inside right here. Because this is where the stairs are. And I don't want to fall off stairs when I'm running upstairs. And then your stairs will be out here. Now, you don't have to use scaffolding in here, but I will. I prefer scaffolding. I like the way it looks. I'm going to leave that open because I have a tower that attaches to the side of this building. Since we have new zip lines, it was originally the lighthouse that I had built, and it is now the new zip lines. You do not have to do these scaffolds here. I know this is a bit of overkill, but for me, that's a lot the way I like to build, and that's how I'm going to build it. You don't have to do it. You can literally just do your stairs. With the walls on either side, the walls support the stairs. Scaffolding is not needed. And that is the first floor. It's a very, you see there's a lot of, a lot of the area space is not built, like built in because it's meant to be left open. And then up here, you know, not closing over the top of the stairs, like the, you just go in and lay out your floors. notice on top of the screen right there from when I deleted the building earlier the mushrooms are still floating which is always nice that they float so now we're just gonna go through get the floors laid out like I said the grass getting the grass planks here because there's not grass too close could be a bit of a pain unless you have a zip line set up nearby say on the rock right here or maybe on that rock where I have that example for from a different video and then you can zip line your, your grass in. But you could just run around to the other side of the front side of the tree by the light and uh, and get grass from right there. It, it's a little slower, but it's doable. And as you see, the exterior storage piece that I have sticking out the side connects in perfectly right there. All right. So you see, that's the storage I added. Just kind of kicked out to the side. Little roof to make it look nice. Now, up here, I used windowed stem walls. And surrounded the whole building. Weeds, e weeds are easy to get here. As you see on the back of the screen, in the background over there, there are weeds, like I was saying, all over this place. Well, we just keep going, like I said, seven wide <coughs> across the front and five down the side. And yes, I do know there's going to be a tower right there that's going to be sharing this wall. I'm not too worried about it, though, as far as the uh, window walls there. Now, this section I left open. I think I went... Just like so. And then I carried it out this way. Basically have a little uh, balcony over the water. Also has a bounce web on it so I can get up onto the roof. Because that's where my mushroom gardens are. This base is kind of small. So it's not like it's not being built like one of my massive mega bases. Like that one that's up there. It is specifically here for when the pond update goes live. I've got a base in, in the area.
There. That is the second floor. And yes, I do have mushrooms up here that I need to collect out of the air. But I'll get those when I get the roof built up there. So, back to building the roof. We're going to use, once again, the squared roof corner. And I'll put down all four of those real quick. Now we're going to go back to the slanted roof, or the grass roof piece is what it's called. And just go around filling it in. Once that's complete, we're going to fill in in all four sides. So even the area over the balcony is going to get filled in with roof. We're going to make the roof a nice uh, rectangle. Now, if you're trying to build these, you have to complete the corner and then come off the corner. You have to complete this one, then complete this one, then complete this one, or else it will say un unsupported. And now you see we have the roof, which is a simple just bunch of grass, uh, grass pieces. As you can see, the house is in just a bit, bit of a different uh, spot than what it previously was. The mushrooms are not lining up 100% right. This house, I think, is a little bit higher off the water, but that's okay. And then out here, I put a bounce web for the sole purpose of making it easy to get up on the roof. So this house, you can see, is a little bit higher. Now, you could use the top for your water, but because I don't come up here that often, I decided to use it for the mushrooms since I don't use mushrooms pretty much ever. I know somebody's probably thinking, well, why are you using them at all? Why not? I have the extra resources. I will use them until I have something else that needs the space. I'm not going to put boxes of storage up here because that's just really out of the way. Now, I will leave the center spot open of the handrails. I will leave this open so when I land on this, the roof, I can just run up. I don't have to jump again. You know, try to make things a little convenient. Now, with a little bit of lighting, so I go to the light to the middle, the middle of the roof. And then, not that it, you need... <coughs> Excuse me. Not that you need mushrooms, but for those who are just starting out and mushrooms are your main food supply, the roof makes for a good spot to place them because you can fit four of these up here with adequate light so it's not super dark when it gets later into the day. And we'll go back and put throw two more lamps up here in the corners out of the way. Now down here is where we'll place the bed, which I like to place in the corner opposite of the stairs. So I'll push it all the way up into the corner. And then a little bedside table, a little decorations. You don't have to do this. This is just something I want to do. Before I do that, though, I'm actually going to close this room in. Actually make an actual, like, bedroom. As well as that gives me walls that I can put weapon racks on for storage. If you, if you visit me uh, while I'm streaming, you'll notice I have weapon racks all down this, all down these walls. Now I will continue the walls all the way up, just to, whoops, close off the actual ceiling, the room. Once again, not necessary. It's a personal preference. And using the corner pieces to close off the little edges. And then a door because that's how I like to do things. I like to have my hinges to where the door swings flat up against this wall. And then we'll go back to, I had a table in here. Now, unfortunately, you can't do it the way I have it in live game, which is put the light right in the center of the table, which I have a light right there in my game. So 
We'll just throw up a couple sconces. And we'll light the room. A little light here. Maybe a light over there. And why not? We'll put one right here too. That way, if it get, gets late and you're running in here, it's not super dark when you're trying to get to where the bed is. And then we'll add more lights and stuff out here as well. It's not just going to be just those lights. So we have a couple of different nooks. I'm going to use boxes here, boxes and jerky racks, as well as the smoothie maker right here. So I'm going to go through placing all the different little pieces I have. You can put uh, places however you like. Uh, it does not have to be built the way I built it at all. Feel free to modify it however you see fit to, uh, to go with the way you like to build. This is just my personal preference. But at the same time, I have people coming in into stream, you know, saying how good my buildings look. I figured I would maybe offer up some guides on how to build some of them. I will have a video as well as building an upside down pyramid too. And I try not to go too heavy on the lights. I mean, I could really go literally light on every post, but that would be just too much. I also have a table right here in the middle that has a light in it as well, which you can't do anymore. So. I do not like that that particular change, but that's the change they made. Now for storage, you can put boxes uh, surrounding the room. So I like to turn my boxes long ways to fit more. I'm not too too worried about their spacing. Like I said, this is creative; it doesn't really matter as much. I'm still going to try and make it look nice, though. There, and you can easily access all of these boxes. Now, there will be more boxes. It's not just going to be just those. There will be boxes right along here. Once again, turn sideways to fit more. And I'm actually starting the corner, which starting at the edge was a mistake for me. I like to start in the corners. Now, these boxes will not be turned sideways, just to keep with the aesthetic. You can turn them sideways if you want. I'm not going to. And then one more. Now, you see they're not all lined up nice and pretty. Um, I'm not worried about it too much right now. But on this wall, it gives you the option of doing weapon racks. So if you don't want to carry all your weapons with you, or if you just want to display some of the stuff you have. I use it to leave things like the mint mallet in here, since I don't use the mint mallet for anything except uh, acorns or quartzite. For me, there are other better weapons for dealing with insects in the game. You see, nice and lit up. Now, once you, I would say, make sure you put your lights up on the wall before you come back with jerky racks if you're going to do your jerky racks in here but you can fit two jerky racks like this and then be able to walk between them because i'm going to put two more jerky racks and then hang a light off the end of one of them Now, you could throw a plant lamp right out here in the middle of the room, or you can hang a sconce. I'm trying to get it turned the right way. Up here. Just with some added light in the center of the room. Not 100% not necessary, but it's possible. I'm going to go ahead and sleep right quick in game. Now this base is kind of small, so if you're limited on space, this might work. That bed actually would be all the way up in the corner. So I'm actually going to move it because it is in the way of what I want to add.
so I can put the bed all the way over like that because every one of my bases has an armor dummy for the ant armor. And yes, it is facing out on purpose. I did not put it up backwards. I put it up that way, specifically facing that direction. Now, if you notice, there isn't that many boxes in here for storage. I probably fit one more. So if you wanted more boxes for storage and you thought, that's just not enough, I need more storage, you can put shelves up here. Literally put grass floor right up there. And put more boxes right along the edge. Which is another storage option. You know, just kind of pop a bunch of boxes right there. And you can do the same thing to the, uh, the little nook to the left over here. And yes, like I said, the spacing is not 100%. It's not where I would normally do it. I would actually try to line them up a little better than that. You can also put box, uh, a shelf up here and put boxes on it. I wouldn't recommend putting a, a shelf in this corner because you really can't fit a box on it thanks to that uh, squared, squared roof corner. But you can always, always put a couple boxes right up here and one maybe around the edge. But you can put more boxes up there as well if you need the storage. Not everybody needs as much needs that much storage, or your storage needs are just different than mine. Oh, okay, let's say where'd that box go? Go up there. <laughs> okay, so it's being difficult, but with the proper space, you can probably fit one more. Maybe if I did put the actual. Uh, floor up there and complete that but see it's not one want let me do it because of the roof or whatever but you see you have quite a quite a few boxes in here not a whole bunch you can always expand on the space which I will probably be expanding my my base built like this soon and then center of the room looks kind of empty so I put a table in it just for the hell of it and this is the table I was talking about that had a light in the middle of it or has a light in the middle of it which unfortunately you can't do that anymore but you can always put a light right at the end. And then a light at the other end. That way you don't just have lights randomly sitting in the middle of the floor of your base. They're next to something. So it might make a bit more sense. So, now your building's well lit. You've got jerky racks. You've got to do one more thing. And that is, for me, is a smoothie maker. And I put it right here out of the way. That way, when I brought my mushrooms down from the roof, I would drop down smoothie maker, and I would make the question mark smoothies, and just go put them in a box, or keep them on if I was running low. Now, down here to make that look a little bit better, we're going to go back to the triangle wall. We're going to grab some handrails so we don't fall in the water. And these handrails on this side will continue around so that if you're bringing uh, weed stems or grass with you, you don't fall in the water, drop it, and then have to spend the time trying to pick it up and get frustrated with all that. Outside, like I said, on the front porch area, off to each side, I have one dew collector. If you're playing solo, two dew collectors uh, at your base should be more than enough. Um, I like to play multiplayer when it works, so I have a lot more. And then even though... I've never really used uh, used the water that is kept in these tanks. I still put a water tank in place. Now, with the addition of the new spinners, I decided I would go right above here. And I just carried over all the way across. Now, I hopped up here because I like to get up here and look around, look to see what I'm doing. So you go to utilities. Number seven. And depending on how many spinners you want, you can you can do one, you can do five. I had a person in my chat yesterday tell me they had 45 in one base. I, I In one base, that to me, that's overkill. But I do have about that many in my world total because I have six bases. Yes, six bases might be overkill, but apparently I build really fast and I get bored. So, you just line these up right across the edge. Yes, the whole back side of the shelf is not being used. It is kind of a 
dead space, wasted space. You could put a box. You could put boxes up there if you wanted. And if you really need more space for boxes, instead of doing spinners right here, you could put your boxes down here. Now I can't get out. You could literally bring this whole sh this whole shelf right across, and just do boxes all the way across. That's that's your choice. But if you can't, if you visited me on Twitch, you would see that this is where this is what my building looks like. Without you know, I'll add the tower in just a second. But that's the building. That is your boathouse. Yes, it is more for design and function. Yes, there is also a workbench right there. Got to have a workbench in the base. Now, in game, I have a stairs. I don't know how I managed to make them work. They go like this. They go down into the water. So at that bottom step, if you fall in, uh, you just swim back towards it. Spam the space bar, and if you don't swim underneath it, like I just did, you can hop out just like that. It takes a little bit of uh, spamming the jump key. Now, for lights in here, you can put sconces all over the place. You know, you can just kind of however you want. I wouldn't go too overboard. I've noticed that, you know, lights may not add as much lag as they used to, but they still added lag in the past. So it's always nice to be able to see because when I'm playing, I don't always stop right when it gets dark and wait for the, the ability to sleep. I keep keep running around for a bit. And you can even put more lights back here if you wanted. It's not necessary. You know, just a nice little well-lit area for your storage. And then that's the basis of how to build my boathouse. Now for the side over here, you see I left this side open on purpose. I'm going to grab the triangle floor. We're going to put a handrail on there because I'm used to people who don't understand that, you know, don't run off the edge. My wife's giggling because she knows I'm talking about her. And now we're going to build our the bases for this. In game, if you come visit me, I have an eight-sided tower here. Here, I will do the six-sided tower, but it's a faster, cheaper build. And I'm going to do it out of 100% out of uh, weed stems, because the bottom half of this tower in-game, when I built it, was just a, a lighthouse. It had no function whatsoever other than aesthetics. Well, now, it has function. And yes, I will leave those floor pieces squared like that, because that's a great place to put lamps. I'm only going to build this up about six stories, uh, two sets of bounce webs, basically, for the purpose of the video. And then you just go up from there. Building alongside a house can be a bit tricky if you're having issues getting your blueprints to take. You can always extend your, your tower over just a bit and actually have a little bit of a walkway between your building and your tower. Or you can build your tower on the rock that's to my left right here. The the big rock right there. You don't have to build it uh, right here. This is totally optional. And you see that's what I'm talking about. I have issues with the roof. Uh oh. What the? Because of the roof tiles... I have issues getting that particular piece to stick. Also, I forgot I need to finish this roof, this wall right here. But you see, uh oh, that's going somewhere. If you fall in, you can always just jump back out. That's not supposed to be there. I'm having issues with that because I have these here. So if I remove these, so, get your building to 100% done before you put in your your jerky racks. You know, hopefully that deletes that out there, not the thing in front of me. Good. Now with that jerky rack on, I should be able to place that with no problem. And there it is. So now from down here, I'm going to place my floor or my bounce web up there. And like I said, creative mode, you know, you can just kind of look up and pop it in place. Drop the bounce web on the ground. 
try to get it as close to the building as possible. Like I said, building, moving your tower away from your building just a, a little short ways. Probably a smart idea. That way you don't have the issue that I'm having when it comes to that. Messing with my, my ability to place those uh, weeds and walls. I think the weeds and walls just wasn't placing because of, yes, because of the, the jerky rack. So get your buildings done 100% before you do the amenities like that. Or at least have them, don't do the ones up against the wall right there until you do your tower build first. And I have a video on the different tower designs for these six sided like this. Um, actually, the towers, they're blurry, but you're, they're center of the screen right now. Because they're still, they're uh, over by Frankenline in this world. So I'm just going to go up to one more set of, uh, one more bounce web up, so up to here. Well, there's no point in me, there's no need for me to build the entire tower. Not for the video. Now, if you don't want to start at the water and you want to start out and build right off the top of your roof, go for it. This is how I built mine. But you definitely can build your tower right off the top of this roof instead of having your uh, your mushroom gardens up there. Put your tower on top of your building. It works. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Saves you some time. Saves you, what's that, four stories of building? Yeah, saves you up to here. So there is some, some time-saving spots. Like I said, I originally built this building, the tower on the side of this building, as a lighthouse. It had no purpose because zip lines weren't in the game yet. Zip lines came to the game, and I modified it and almost tripled its height. As you see, I like bounce webs more than stairs because if you stream or you just uh, don't want to have to deal with the constant spinning, uh, bounce webs are just a smoother transition up your tower. And then from here, you would just keep adding walls and make your tower to whatever desired height you want. But that is uh, the basics of building a little boathouse in Grounded. I know it's going to take a lot longer game than it did in this video because this is creative after all. But if you like, like the content you saw here, you want to see more like it, I do stream every day on Twitch. My link will be in the description below. Stop by, say hi, ask me any kind of questions. Um, or if you just want to see any one of my different bases, come on by. And I'll be happy to stop and show you guys what, what I've got built so far. But until the next video, y'all have a good one.